Life is so busy. If you blink, you can miss something amazing. It's important to take a moment and enjoy what we have and the people around us. I'm Mo Hagen, Chief Operating Officer for Campit Pro, and welcome to A Moment with Mo, a podcast where I will welcome some incredible guests to talk fitness and nutrition, mindset and self-improvement, setting your goals into action, and much, much more. Now let's get chatting. Hello and welcome along episode number four, A Moment with Mo. This is going to be an incredible conversation today and I am inviting all of you to bring your courage to listening and then adopting some of the conversation or more specifically the questions that we're going to be embarking upon. The theme this month, as it is with my blog as well, is around the most powerful question yet this year. Are you ready to spring forward your life and career with courage? And that question, just saying it out loud, makes my heart rate rise. I'm not sure why, but it is excitement. It's joy because I'm so excited to have this conversation. I also have to declare that every month it starts with S is an exciting month in my world. I don't know what it is about spring followed by summer that just gives me a sense of rebirth, renewal, rejuvenation, also permission to redo. And it's so early yet in 2023 that we have the opportunity of dusting off the blues if we've experienced any of those winter blues to perhaps do a little bit of spring into spring cleaning you know, getting rid of the old and bringing in the new. I also love it from a a global perspective in terms of what spring is about for the planet and for the people. And exciting times here, of course, in the Northern Hemisphere as we welcome in spring soon. And really take this opportunity to focus on a rebirth of sorts. In January, I wrote a blog entitled Mo's Guide to Success for Those Ready to Move Forward in 2023. And it is still early in the year for us to plant those seeds and to cultivate that desired goals that we have planted in our goals or in our mind for this year and really start to take action. That is where courage comes in. Today, I have an incredible guest that I cannot wait to introduce you to, because when I think of courage and getting on a journey towards success, it really requires you not only to declare your goals, but to declare your goals with purpose. And purpose is that deep, explosive reasoning or desire. We call it your why. And this takes courage to really live what that deeper purpose why you are here in this one precious life and really putting that forward in the world. Uh, Recently, I came across a quote that I want to share. I believe it's so perfect for not only the conversation we're going to have today, but the guests that I'm inviting on to share in this conversation. The quote is by Elizabeth Cady Statton. The best protection a woman can have is courage. It reminds me that with courage as our protector, we can be Wonder Woman. I also have a plaque here in my office and the plaque, it says, always be yourself unless you can be Wonder Woman and then always be Wonder Woman. So my guest today is Wonder Woman and she is Wonder Woman in an incredible world within the fitness industry, within the, within the industry that she is a specialist in that I can't wait for you to learn about. And my guest today is Melanie Levenberg. So I welcome you in. Hello, Melanie. Hi, Mo. Thanks so much for having me. Wow, what an introduction, Wonder Woman. I feel courageous just with you recognizing that in me. And it's, you know, I think that in order to recognize it in one woman, you have to to, to be it within yourself. So from one Wonder oh. Woman to another, thank you. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome. And I love what you said about recognizing it within yourself and becoming what you seek. But the other thing I love, and this is what I love about the conversation we're going to have, Melanie, is that sometimes we don't, others see strengths 
or the Wonder Woman within you that you don't yet see. And it is all about lifting each other up. And that's something that you do so well in your profession and the passionate work that you do. So for those who do not know you, I don't know who that would be, but I'd love to take a moment just to introduce you formally. And then we'll dive right into our very exciting conversation. So Melanie Levenberg is Ken Fit Pros Fitness Professional of the Year for 2022-2023, and that deserves an applause. And the area that um, you are Fit Pro of the Year in is Fitness Instructor Specialist. And I love the story that you brought to the stage about your return to the fitness industry as a fitness instructor. So I hope we talk about that. Melanie holds a master's in education, is a kid's fitness expert, international speaker, author, TED Talk, TEDx presenter, Mm -hmm. and the founder of Play International. Melanie's programs have gained global accolades for boosting mental health and getting over and has gotten over three and a half million students active. I can't believe that number. Um, And you've done that through our passion for moving people. That is fitness, dance, yoga, and play. What a trifecta there. Melanie coaches fitness professionals how to build their businesses by bringing fitness into schools. That's a game changer. And most recently, Melanie worked with CanFit Pro to redesign and revamp, renew, and relaunch its Children's Fitness Coach course. Congrats, and thank you for doing that. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me, and thank you for being part of the, building this platform that you know trains people interested in working with kids or in fitness to, to get the skills to go out there and actually make a an impact, but with qualification and professionalism. I think it's so, so incredible. So thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. It was so happy to work with you at Camp Fit Pro and, and thank you. And one of the most courageous things, if this is a lesson for everyone that's joining today, it is if you see an opportunity and you haven't yet received an invitation, then invite yourself to the party, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what you did. You invited yourself to the CamFit Pro, you know, education team, and you invited the opportunity to revamp our uh, children's fitness coach program. And we were actually waiting for talent to come along to help us because, you know, there's so many things going on right now. And we just, you know, really it takes the talent. So, you know, that's courage in itself. And that's a really, really important thing. It's almost like Wonder Woman and you just put out your shield, but then you lifted it and you, you put yourself out there. So thank you. We're Thanks so for grateful. Saying that. Thank you for saying that because I don't think a lot of people understand that the kind of opportunities I've had in my career have come from recognizing where there's a need, seeing a, perhaps an alignment, feeling it within me, and then just creating those opportunities for myself. Like you didn't post a job for a child's you know, fitness course revamp writer, I proposed it because I'm, it's something I'm passionate about and I felt like I could serve and Canfor Pro was really willing to receive that. And so it, it's, it was really, um, it was really exciting for me that you did say yes. And, it, and, and I'm happy that you brought that up because people just assume that you kept yep. me. People assume because I was a fitness instructor of the year, like, oh, can you do this? It's not, it, that was started way before the nomination, way before the award. Um, and, and it, that was one of th- those moments of, the, of courage, you know, like you take the deep breath and you send the email and you take the deep breath and you, you know, you text the person and you have the call and, and you propose it. And, and those, those are the moments that um, have created the career that I have today. It's, it's not mm-hmm. in those easy moments when people see you and come to you and you say, yes, it's when you, you see what's possible out there for yourself. And then you take that deep breath, take you believe in breath. yourself. And hit send. You hit send. And the outcomes don't always result in what you think they're going to, but it's the act of doing it that builds the skill that continues to move you forward in your own journey and your own greatness. And you have to just trust. 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 And if I may add, I had this incredible coach for 18 years. And I remember the day when I said to my coach, you know, I really want to write a book. And then I got an invite to actually submit a book idea to a publishing company. And I waited six months to hit that send button. And it's the courage and the trust and the doing it when you're, especially if you have fear, face it and do it anyways. And you know, this coach said to me, which I think adds on to the trust piece is sometimes you have to let your ego go. 
Mm. Okay, what if they say no? But often it's not a no, it may be not now, but it could lead to something you didn't even imagine possible for yourself. But if you didn't hit send, you just never know. You never know. It's never true. know. <laughs> the outcome of that particular story is after I left that tro- that coaching session, I did hit send on that book outline that I had stuck in a draft for months. And within three weeks, I was in the office at Penguin Publishing talking about not one book, but a two book launch. Amazing. So you just don't know. And of course, I'll save that for another story if our, as far as fear at the highest level. Um, but hey, fear can also be a driver of performance, right? So, and the other thing that's important, I'm here with you. We taught, I taught, I shared about my coach. It's surrounding yourself, you know, with people that are like-minded, that have stories that inspire and move you. And sometimes those stories are, they're like a golden ticket to step into your own story or take action and share your story or build upon your story. But what I find is the greatest motivator for me, perhaps you, is to surround myself with people that motivate me to live out my goals and to live out my story the way that I seek to live my life. And that's why we're here today. I thought if there was a person talk about springing forward in your life, in your career, and having the courage to do so and coming together for this conversation, that's why I reached out to you right away. And there's an important message here for everyone that's tuning in that we're going to talk about as one of the questions that I'm going to ask Melanie. And it ties into how you became the Ken Fit Pro National Fitness Professional of the Year out of hundreds of nominations. And we'll talk about how that all happened and the important lesson in that. I'd love you, Melanie, to tell us a little bit more about your story and um, where you're at today as that award-winning Fit Pro or perhaps with the work that you're doing indirectly with the fitness industry that has uh, really helped you live your passion and live your career in this space. Mm, Thanks. Um, Well, my passion for movement and for physical activity came and was revealed to me when I was really young. I grew up in a small town in Northern Ontario in Canada called Capascasing. And that town, you know, was, was an opportunity for me to try multiple sports because we had such limited number of people in our high school that I, it was just when you played basketball, you also played volleyball and soccer and all of those things. I grew up as an athlete. And so I knew I wanted to bring the joy of movement to others. And I loved working with kids. I always knew that I was meant to work with a lot of children. So I became a physical education teacher. I went to the Western University or UWO at the time, and I took my kinesiology and education degrees there. And it's also where I discovered fitness instructing. I, um, for those of you who don't know this, I would teach like these classes at the on campus where there was 200 people and a stage in the middle of this UCC gym. And we would have these classes called Britney box fit where we we would all sing along to Britney Spears music and like do kickboxing. And it was, it was the funnest thing ever. Um, And I loved fitness in the campus setting. And when I left university, I, I, I kept teaching fitness classes. I went from a 200 person stage audience, like literally five times a week was like conference to smaller classes. And I kind of lost my joy a little bit for group exercise. Um, also, the demographic wasn't my highest joy. You know, a lot of women were coming to me being like, I just I hate my body and I don't want to do I want to shape it and sculpt it and tone it. And it just didn't feel right. I love movement for joy and for excitement and for community. So I just put fitness aside for a little bit or what I thought was a little bit. <laughs> I went uh, <laughs> I went to Toronto and um, I the University of Toronto and I did my master's in education and while I was doing that I re I dabbled into fitness um like going to fitness gyms and I joined the good life clubs and that's where I discovered Les Mills and I discovered you know Les Mills classes body pumped and I and I loved it so much and by that point in my career I was actually working in schools and working with school teachers and working with with students and um long story short I had in my career had to learn how to teach kids in the school as a physical education teacher, how to teach dance or how to dance. And I was terrified. I was terrified of dance uh, because I had never learned dance. I had never been in a dance studio. 
it was, it was literally like the thing that I, you know, we would call the local dance studio and say, Hey, please come teach dance because I'm a physical education teacher. I'm an athlete. I can do basketball and soccer and volleyball, but dance is not something I do. And so I, because of this, you know, pathway in my career, I ended up in a place where I actually had to teach. And I was like, okay, so if I wasn't going to teach dance, I want to teach dance the way that I I've seen po is possible. And so I've used a lot of inspirations from the fitness industry. And I did the scariest thing that I could possibly imagine doing, which was becoming certified in body jam, because there's lots of dance fitness programs that are out there where you can create your own choreography and come up with your own moves and, and do your own thing. But body jam is the kind of program Ooh. and I'm sure many of your followers know this, but if like you start on a beat, you count and it's like the whole time for 55, minutes you have to stay on the correct choreography the correct foot the correct introduction and so I did the scariest possible thing I'm like if I can learn how to become a body jam instructor then I know that I will feel super confident bringing mm -hmm. dance to students in other ways but I know that those skills that I'm going to learn are just going to be magnificent and it it reignited my love of fitness and the fitness community and and even just like not knowing behind the scenes of good life, the, the beautiful com community that is the instructors that are connected with the Les Mills program and the Les Mills brand just like reignited all of this joy for movement and for community and for helping others. And so dabbling with a little bit of like aerobic led dancing, but also simplicity from different models that I had learned in physical education. I started teaching this way of teaching dance in, in schools. The teachers were like, what you're doing is really different. You should present at a conference. So I said, yes. And then those conference sessions, people were like, I want to learn how to do what you do. So I was like, well, I'll just make a weekend course and teach you how to do what I do. And I started te training teachers on the weekend and eventually it became more popular that I left my full-time, like my full-time job in the teaching world. And I started my own business. I stumbled into entrepreneurship and I just responded to what people kept showing me. They, they saw in me and also needed from me, which was more resources and more tools so that they could work with kids because they had hesitations. They didn't know how they didn't have the time. So I, that's how I started my own kids fitness brand. And I had no idea. No idea. Even now, like even I say, like, if you talk to me, you know, 15 years ago and you're like, you're going to be traveling the world, being paid as a presenter to go to 13 different countries, reach three for five million kids in mostly dance. I'm like, what? You've got the wrong person. Like, that is not me. Uh, and it's about showing up and, and having the courage to continue to to feel what's inside of you, what you're meant to do and let go of what you think it's supposed to look like. Like, if I had drawn out my career, it would have probably involved going to York University, becoming, you know, dancer and being on this video. And then once you're on it, like there's this pathway that we all think we're supposed to have based on what we see. But there's so, something much more greater than what our brains can construct that is actually available to us if we're just willing to let go of what we think it's supposed to look like and just show up for what we want. And that's 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 how I got to where I'm at today. Just wow. you know, got to keep showing up <laughs> for yourself. Well, you just, I mean, that's the ultimate story of uh, are you ready to spring forward your life and your career with courage? You are, you just told the story that was the title. If that was a book with that title on it, you just wrote the whole story <laughs> of that entire book, which was unbelievable because again, it's not what you imagine. You stumble across it. Your greatest fear has now become your career. Yep. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, we could stop right here and, and I would Thanks, feel everyone. complete, <laughs> but we're not because, you know, I have some questions for you, but I do want to say that while I knew that you went to school at my Alamarter, which is like just down the road, I had no idea that you fell in love with group fitness in the same place that I fell in love with group fitness at the UCC, taking fitness classes there. And I didn't teach there because I actually was moonlighting at Good Life Fitness back then called Number One Nautilus because I'm way older than you are. <laughs> but that's where I saw that community and thought, I want to not only be in that community, but I want to lead that kind of a community. And so we both kind of found our love in the exact same place at the exact same university in the same city. I just feel like we're sisters from another, well, we are now sisters from another mother. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. That is super cool. And again, the power of connecting with like-minded people, you find out a lot about your likenesses and familiarities and also at least clues to the path that you're on when you find others on a similar path. It does reinforce that 
even though we might have fear and not know what the heck we're doing or where we're going to trust, Mm. which is really key. Uh, For those who follow my blog, I, I, in my blog for this April, this month, which is the theme of springing forward in your life and your career with courage, I dove into this being more of a question, reflection, and courageous thoughtfulness around where you're at, asking questions that would help motivate you and to give you excitement through planting seeds in your mind garden about what steps, what beliefs, habits, behavior that you might need to welcome in perhaps some changes in those beliefs, in those habits, in those behaviors that you need to change in order to ensure your forward journey this year. And so I thought it'd be fun to ask Melanie the same questions. Mm -hmm. So here we go. The first question, and this uh, is something that I've been asking a lot of. In fact, I will ask this question for the entire year with almost everyone I have the opportunity to speak with in a formal presentation or um, brainstorm session because it ties into the national theme for CanFit Pro's 30th anniversary, and that is around the courage to be. My first question is, what are you working on this year that is calling on your courage to move your business, career, life? to the next level? Um, so this might be an untraditional answer, but my uh, the biggest courage that I need right now to move my business forward is actually a commitment to saying no. And n- saying no to people, saying no to new projects, saying no to screen time, saying no to just unhealthy habits that are in my life. Um, I am an overachiever and this really funny awareness has come across my world in the last little while, which is this thing, because I'm an overachiever, I love being productive. And the sensation of productivity temporarily gives me a sensation and a satisfaction, like I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. But you don't always, um, you can't always see where you're going if you're constantly busy. And so what I wanted to do is to take some time to realign what I actually, with what I want in my life and align my actions to what I actually want, as opposed to just doing stuff because it feels good to do stuff. Um, Because it really does feel good. These temporary dopamine hits when we do things that we love don't always give us the results that we want long term. Mm. So the the greatest courage is saying no to that incredible project. Sometimes we were talking about people coming to you and seeing something in you, and they're like, I see this in you. Could we do this together? And it sounds like an awesome project, and it lights me up. And it, to me, it's like, okay, I have to take, have a courage right now to just take a moment and pause and reflect if this opportunity needs a bit more time to simmer, if it just needs to be a not yet as opposed to a no. And the courage to say yes to me before I say yes to something out there that might not lead to the goals that I actually want to achieve. Wow. Saying yes to yourself before you mm. say yes to others. That is a mic drop. Aha. Uh-huh. If I haven't heard that I have not heard that before. Mm. And I, I've heard, you know, yeah, you got to learn how to say no so you can say yes to the best, but saying yes, which is the, what we want to do, but saying yes to ourselves Absolutely. before we say yes to others, that is powerful. And thank you for the courage just to share that because you said it was non-traditional, but it's actually most important. And um, I'm hearing more people today embarking upon that courageous no. I think it is a time and perhaps too with the change in season, the opportunity for that reflection and renewal and going back to what you are focusing on or committing to yourself, because we can get caught up in the busyness of the, of the day, the week, the month, the year. And before you know it, the year is over and we're like, Ooh, what happened? And you look back, I didn't do anything I wanted to do this year. I was so busy working or busy being busy. Mm -hmm. So thank you. That's 10 out of 10 on that one. Not that we're going to grade an answer. They're all great. Here's the question that really takes us back to the heart or the root of of our purpose that we put into action is, Melanie, what are three key traits or values that allow you to be successful in your career or your life? 
Um, okay. So I think that one of the top ones is optimism, which I kind of balance with hope, but it's this idea that I'm always expecting the best is yet to come. There's no moment in time that I ever feel like it, that's it. This is as good as it's going to get and anticipating joy, anticipating happiness, anticipating more coming my way has helped me gain perspective in moments when things might not have looked so happy or positive. And it also, I think, keeps my mind open to creativity and to joy and to excitement and to possibilities. So I, I've noticed that I have this natural optimism um, and, and hope within me that things are always going to be better. Um, that being said, it's great to hope and want for things, but resourcefulness is, you know, I was like, which one's my top? I'm like, well, resourcefulness should be up there because you just, no one else is going to do it for you. You, there is nothing inside of your mind that you are dreaming about that someone else is like, Ooh, what's, what's, what are they dreaming about? Let me go make that happen for them. So you're the one who has to show up first. You have to communicate. We've talked about this a few times, tell other people what your dream is, tell them, you know, just share, just sharing can help other people get on board and they can support you. They're not going to make it happen for you. Taking that courageous action and, and going to find things, not waiting for anyone to bring you anything or feel like anyone owes you anything. Mm. Like we have a thing at play, like I'm sure it's, it's in, I've, this is a common thing, but it's GTS, like Google that stuff, you know, just like, how do I, like, there's only two of us at HQ. Now our team has kind of flexed and grown along with the virtual times and yes. non-virtual times. And now there's only two of us. And it's like two of us need to know how to run all aspects of a business. We don't have a marketing department. We don't have a finance department. You know, we don't have any of those things. So it's like, do you know the answer? Yes, no. And if not, it's like, you got to find out how to do it and resourcefulness brings the sense that you can find the answer to anything if you mm -hmm. just take the time to go find it and you just have the will to find it instead of feeling frustrated that you don't know how to do something just like go find you can do anything learn how to do anything now we've got the world at our fingertips and uh you just need to have the the motivation the motivation yeah. to uh to do it and uh to find the answers and then wow. the third the third one is playfulness. I think that uh, <laughs> you have to be playful. Like it's like life is not that serious. And uh, I actually just watched a movie last night on the plane called About Time. And I love that movie. It sh I, I had seen it before, but it landed. And I, spoiler alert, he, he travels through time. And one of the things that he does is that he relives a day. And he, he goes, he go he's always reliving mistakes that he had made. But his dad tells him, go relive a day that you felt was just mundane and boring or maybe frustrating. Something that you would just call it like a myth day and relive it like you could see it through new eyes, like it was just a wonderful day. And, and it just, I, it just sparked in me. I'm like this, that's how it is. We have to live every day. Like, what if this was a game? What if it was joyful? What if it was a gift? Like, how can you just play with every moment? Because we get to choose how we show up every day. So mm -hmm. why not choose to, to have fun with it all? All of the random things, the coffee shop delays, the traffic, the, you know, the random hiccups, the childcare things that happen mm -hmm. when you're working from home, you just be like, okay, how do we roll with this? How mm -hmm. can this be? How can this moment be fun? And oh, I love that. Yeah. That's a, that's one thing I, I chose joy as my word this year. Really, that's the code word for having more play in the work that I do, because I do, I'm a recovering perfectionist who really wants it all to be as great as it can be. And, and I realized that that's a standard that may work for me, but does not necessarily empower the world to want to do their best work. If perfection is the only, you know, end of the, of the game or accepting outcome. So, but the playfulness piece, that's so cool. And it's such a healthier vibe in every cell and bone in your body, than if you're approaching each day with, Oh, the, you know, Oh my gosh, it's going to be a da, da, day approaching. How can you make each moment playful? I it's absolutely perfect. And I'm not, I mean, that, there's your brand right there. And I love it. And I wasn't surprised that that would be one. So yes, catch that playfulness people play yes, and think of work as play. And then you'll never work a day in your life is that quote that we hear a lot but the play piece is so important. I love that. Thank you. And if we have time, I want to come back to your brand play. Maybe you can explain that as well. Um, how you write your brand. The, how, can you tell us about that? 
because again, I'm learning so much from you here today and I've known you for quite some time, but tell us about your brand play and even what's represented in how you write it. Cause that's something that has always intrigued me. For sure. So my company is called play, which obviously forces me to live that playfulness. Our company culture is professionally playful because play sometimes can be very in the world of professionalism and fitness. We felt that play just it wasn't taken seriously. So we try to come across as professionally playful. We show up, we do things professionally, but it's in a playful energy. And there's a number three in our in the, how we spell play, P-L-3-Y. And that's because there's three rules that we bring to every class that we teach. And this is how we begin every single class. We tell everyone that there's three rules they have to follow. The first rule is they have to be positive. So it means if at any point in the class they think, I can't do it, this is too hard, this workout is too hard, this dance move is too hard, or they find themselves comparing themselves to someone else being like, that person's so much better at them, at at this activity than I am. It's so funny because we have this brain that goes into autopilot of negative self-talk. And Mm -hmm. I always tell kids, I work with a lot of kids, that it kind of happens like around when you're a teenager. We just get this like autopilot brain and every single one of us gets it. It just happens. And if we don't recognize that this brain that we have is on autopilot of negativity, then it can start to take over. So the purpose of the class and the the exercise is not to get a better workout or to get stronger. The first thing I, I want kids or adults or teens who are experiencing our programs is to notice if their brain goes into that negative self-talk and choose to change it. Choose mm-hmm. to say, instead of saying, I can't say, you know what, I'll give it a try. Instead of, I can't say, I can, or we tell them, instead of, I can't, what if you just spent 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes saying to yourself, I'm awesome. Like, how would that change your your life and how you are? So that's the first rule, be positive. The second rule is be fun. We tell everyone they're not allowed to have fun. And then they get all serious and say, you're not allowed to have fun. And they're like, what? Like, it's because you can't have fun. I can't say, hey, Mo, I'll just go get my fun. And like, here's my fun. Um, So we we don't want kids to have fun or adults. We want them to be fun. Be fun. How do you Mm -hmm. practice being the most fun version of yourself? And then the third rule is be yourself. So in our class, we don't, in, in a dance context, we don't have a left foot, right foot. Um, setting. We don't care which foot the kids are on or the adults are on. Um, We want everyone to take the movements, understand the purpose of the movement. We're all going to do the same move at the same time, but we want every body to look different while we're moving because everyone has, in the context of dance, their own style to share with the world. Mm. In the context of a fitness workout, everyone has a different body and a way that the exercise could feel better in how they're executing it. So we encourage everyone to look different and to move in a way that feels good for them. So, and that's that's what we expect. We want everyone to look slightly different while we're all doing the same move because that's that's what it that's what this is all about. We don't need a world where people are copying each other more. We need a world where people are ex- feeling how they feel and expressing that confidently into the world. So with courage, courageously. So be positive, be fun, and be yourself are the three rules we promote through all of our fitness programs. And that's why there's a number three in in the. In the oh name. wow! Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I was going to ask you the following question. I, you just really answered it. How can you have fun with what you're doing and build more joy into your daily action? Well, your three rules of your program answered that question. Like, absolutely done. Perfect. Amazing. You can't have fun. You got to be fun. You know, you gotta, like, it's like we're all that. Winning. It's like, I'm going to, it's like, oh, I just wish life was more fun. Like, oh, I wish it wasn't so stressful. It's like when my relationship is better, when my when, job is better, when, when I lose weight. Yeah. When, when exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, well, no, you can be, be fun it. regardless of those circumstances. And so that's, yeah. Brilliant. All right. <laughs> well, here's the question. This is a question that's going to lead us into a question that I will ask of all of you that are here today. So Melanie, what influenced your decision to submit your nomination for CanFit Pro's Fitness Professional of the Year? Of course, we know the outcome. You won. I would love you to take us all behind the scenes and share how courage played a role, if any, and what advice you would give to those listening or watching who may be thinking about submitting a nomination for themselves or someone else, whether that is with CanFit Pro's Fit Pro of the Year or any award in your industry. Absolutely. Well, the first thing is believing in yourself. You have to believe in what you're doing. And I think all of us as fitness professionals, when you tap into why you became a fitness professional, the impact you wanted to make, the impact you are making currently, and you sit in with that, 
I, I hope that there's something inside of you that says, you know what, what I'm doing is important. I am changing lives. I love what I do. I am making an impact. And that's all you need. What's interesting is I, I, you know, we talk to a lot of fitness professionals and I would say like, what are some of your attributes and traits? You know, Mo just asked me three, three of my attributes and traits and often confidence. I would say, are you a confident person? Like, of course I'm a confident person. And I'd say, well, do you help your clients feel confident? I was like, absolutely. So why is it that we can't translate that confidence when it comes time to submitting an application? Because as soon as we see it in someone else and someone comes to you saying, hey, I think you should apply for this you know, fitness professional of the year, or even within yourself, like when you see those nominations come in, immediately that brain we talked about being like, well, you're not good enough. Well, you know what we do is we Google the other winners being like, well, look at what they've done. And then we we self-analyze being like, well, compared to them, these are all the reasons why I wouldn't be selected. Therefore, I should not apply, which is counterintuitive to what who we say we are. We are, we're confident. If you are actually confident, then take that deep breath you know, get your paperwork ready, call a few contacts, ask your members to, to, to nominate you or to, to, because there's, there's some um, opportunities for members to send in how they feel about you. Just like in like very, it's so easy. First of all, the nomination is so easy and, and get a little support from the outside and just hit send. Um, because it, it really, you have to match who you say you are. And I think every fitness professional, if you sit here and you're listening to this or you're watching this and you ask yourself, like, am I a confident person? Absolutely. If you say yes, then like, then do it. Then what is stopping you? You're the only person stopping yourself from, from being recognized. And the recognition isn't just in the award. It's in the whole process of the recognition. You know, working with Canva Pro has been amazing throughout the whole journey of the nomination. And what it does, it also allows you to be recognized by your peers, by your supporters, by your members throughout the nomination process. So like, what if, what if you don't win? Well, then you literally just became seen by the members of your community. And I hope that you receive that recognition because there is one winner at the end. But I think the whole process of, you know, hundreds of fitness professionals, hopefully thousands of fitness professionals in Canada being recognized and seen for the professionalism that they bring, for the knowledge, the quality, the impact, the connection, the love, the care that needs to be celebrated. And this could be a really powerful movement for you as an individual. So what if you didn't make it mean anything, whether or not you won, but that you stepped in courageously to saying, you know what, what I do matters. I change lives. And I, you know, this is my moment to step into that for that purpose and that purpose only. And then let the or better come out of it. Let the process unfold. Don't be held to the, to the outcome, you know, stay present to the moment of what it means and, and, and go for it. Brilliant. And uh, I've worked with the fitness professional of the year now for about 14, 15 years. And um, as to your words, absolutely correct. Every single person that has reached at least the finalist level, those are the ones that I work with, all of them have said, you know, even before the outcome was announced, whether I, you know, win the title of Fit Pro of the Year, the process and the experience going through this has been the prize in itself because it reminded me how much I had been able to contribute, live my joy, do what I love, live my purpose, remind myself. They all, all found it a moment of reflection when they were looking through the application because it does help ask you to draw back on your on your activities and what you've achieved or contributed to over the past year or two. And that in itself is in keeping with our theme about springing forward in your career, you need to actually look back to remind yourself what you have accomplished and whether it is recognized by others, this is the opportunity you can recognize it in yourself and, you know, give yourself that positive reinforcement that what you do matters. And, and it also for some, and this happened for some, it reminded them what path they were on. And for some of them, it actually steered them in a different direction as a result of the application process. For some of them, it was reaching the finalist position. And for others, even as becoming the winner of the Fit Pro of the Year, it moved them into their new direction in life. And they haven't looked back. One of our first fitness professionals of the year, doc, now Dr. Eric Sudiki, 
he actually reminded by winning that award, the impact that he can make. And he realized he wanted to do more of that impact. So he went on to take, to take medicine and he's now a family physician. And he still says that that award was the tipping point or the springboard for his career that he did not envision until that year. Amazing. Isn't that powerful? I have goosebumps. I love it. I love these moments. Like there's so oh. much more magic in this universe for us. You just have to keep stepping up. You have to step up and say, I'm ready to receive it. Like I recognize how awesome I am and bring me, show me what's next and just wait. Just there's, you know, it's, it's all there for us. We just have to show up to be there. All there for us and apply the rules from play and the process will be most enjoyable. And it's not about the outcome, right? It's about the process or the journey towards wherever that goal will take you and trust that we may not know where the heck we're going, but when we know why the way will appear. Absolutely. So I'd love before I close and ask the most important question of all our, our viewers and listeners today, I'd love just for you to share what's the best way for people to contact you or to follow you, perhaps work with you Do share. Absolutely. So the best way to connect with me is on Instagram through my business account, which is Plate Fitness. Now, you know, it's spelled P-L-3-Y Fitness. Um, or my personal account on Instagram is Melanie Levenberg. And that's where I share more about the entrepreneur life and living in Whistler. Um, if anyone is interested in learning how to work with kids and how to work with kids in fitness or how to start a business in schools, that is my jam. That is what I love helping other people do. I either help um, you do that with our brand, which has been prepackaged. And we have programs that are taught in schools, award-winning programs, voted number one on the Discovery Education Channel. Schools love our programs. But I also know that some fit pros love creating their own thing. They have their own ideas for what they would like to bring to the to the school sector and just don't understand how to work with schools. I also do business coaching to help you figure out what your in-school offer can be and how to actually build a business around that. Um, and so those are, those are my two highest joys. I think it's incredible that I get to do this and help other people experience what I've experienced myself because it has been so fulfilling and satisfying. And um, yeah, if anyone is a Camper Pro member, we have offers and discounts for uh, the play community um, for Camper Pro members. So uh, we've got some links there that we can share with everyone there too. Great. Thank you. And you actually target, you hit on both of the top trends within the CanFit Pro Trends Report for 2022-23. And they are whether you love freestyle, creating your own program, or whether you love that receive it in a box, all pre-choreographed and pre-formatted for you, uh, such as how many of us love to teach with that pre-choreography, you offer both. Yep. That is amazing <laughs> and very, very smart as an entrepreneur. So. Uh, to close, the question that I would ask, invite you all to reflect on is the following. What is courage calling on you to do this year? And in case you missed it, nominations for the 2023 CamFit Pro Fitness Professional of the Year is now open until May 24th. So this is earlier. If you are a CamFit Pro member, you follow Melanie or myself in our fitness communities. This is earlier this year because we have a you, typically, it's a big, big influx of nominations, and they uh, tend to come last minute. So we're giving you more notice. We started January 1st. You have till May 24th to submit either a nomination for yourself or someone else. You've received incredible behind-the-scenes experience as well as advice and ways to go about doing that. You heard it twice today. It is an easy process. The most difficult process is this, you know, what the mind tells you that you're not worthy. Well, you decide to be confident and take action by submitting your nomination or lifting someone else up by submitting a nomination on their behalf. They would then continue and complete that nomination. It's the, it's that invitation that starts the process. If you missed my January blog, it is the end, coming to the end of Q1 in this year. If you are in business, you know what that is, the first quarter of the year. It is still plenty of time to check out Mo's Guide to Success for those ready to move forward in 2023. You can download that from my website, and it involves messages and related tools and practices and resources 
And it really is set out to be an intention to help you step forward and achieve what you define as as your success for 2023. So I want to thank you, Melanie, so much. And it's been a delight. I I feel this has been such a gift. And I have to say, with all honesty, it was one of those I sometimes would classify as not so magnificent moments uh, within my week this week. And you have absolutely been a gift. And I just love the opportunity to connect. And this has been a great moment with Mo, many moments here today. But thank you. So many incredible golden nuggets. I'm so grateful. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, Mo, for having me. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's always a And uh, time go out there, everyone. Plant those seeds. Welcome in spring. Let's take this time to renew, rejuvenate, re-energize, and take action. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.